So it said that Sam Kinison, the comedian, the bad boy comedian that was yelling a lot, he'd wear that do rag or whatever. So Sam Kinison, he had this one joke where he said he knew the solution to world hunger. You know, everybody's talking about getting people that's hungry, sending food over to Africa. He says that you need to get them U-Haul trucks. You don't need to get them food. You need to get them U-Haul trucks because you live in a desert. You live in a fucking desert. Go to where the food is at. And so Sam Kennison, ironically, is going to die in the desert talking to God in California. The high decibel comic and a former Pentecostal preacher is driving U.S. Highway 95 to a sold out run in Laughlin, Nevada on the evening of April 10th, 1992 when his Trans Am collided head on with a pickup truck. It's Friday, April 10th, 1992. He died when he was 38 years old after his white 1989 Pontiac 20th anniversary turbo Trans Am was struck head on on U.S. Route 95, four miles, 6.4 kilometers north of Interstate 40 and around 15 miles, 24 kilometers northwest of Needles, California, by a pickup truck driven by 17-year-old Troy Pearson, who'd been drinking alcohol. The pickup truck crossed the center line of the roadway and went into Sam Kinison's lane. At the time of the collision, Kinison was traveling to Laughlin, Nevada, to perform at a sold-out show. Sam Kinison was lying between the seats of his car at the scene of the collision. He was not killed instantly, according to his brother. His brother and the others begged him to lie down, and he died with his best friend, Carl LeBeau, who had been in the following van, holding his head in his hands. And so this, a lot of this reminds me a lot of James Dean. James Dean was killed with a head-on collision, and he's just driving this little tiny Pontiac Trans Am, Sam Kinison was, and he's hit head-on by a pickup truck. And so the, they were both hit head-on. Both were seemingly not at fault. And then they're going to die, um, you know, after, after this. There's some, another connection, too. You know, they're both celebrities. Um, he was going to a gig, whereas he was just going to a racing show. So, the, oh yeah, and then they both had a friend who held them in their arms while they died. So, Carl LeBeau was ha holding Sam Kinison, and then James Dean had one of his friends who was holding him when he died. So, that's a good friend right there. That's, you know, as an atheist, I see death differently. So really, if you're around me and I'm dying, just hold my arms. Just give me physical human touch, and then let me drift on into, you know, the, the next level. Sam Kinison was found, so he was um, also, um, not also, but he was, you know, found between the seats of his car at the collision. It, it said that he wasn't killed instantly. It also was said that James Dean wasn't killed instantly either. He still had a pulse, said the person on the scene right after it had happened. Now, Sam Kinison is going to die, right, but he doesn't die immediately. He appeared initially to observers to appear to have suffered no serious injuries. But then within minutes, as he was lying down, I guess he tried to move, and they were like, hey, don't move, just lie there. Within minutes, he suddenly said to nobody in particular, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. LeBeau later said it was, as, it was as if he was having a conversation talking to someone else, some unseen person. Then there was a pause as if Kennison was listening to another person speak. But then he asked, but why? And after a long pause, LeBeau heard him clearly say, okay, okay, okay. LeBeau said the last okay was so soft and at peace. Whatever voice was talking to him gave him the right answer, and he just relaxed with it, and he said it so sweet like he was talking to somebody he loved. Kinnison then lost consciousness. Efforts to resuscitate him failed. Kinnison died, died at the scene from internal injuries. An autopsy found that he suffered numerous traumatic injuries, including a dislocation in the cervical spine, a torn aorta, and torn blood vessels in his abdominal cavity, which caused his death within minutes of the collision. Malika Sori, Sori, this is Sam Kinison's wife. He had married uh, Malika six days prior to him dying in 1992 in the desert. So he was uh, Pearson, 
Okay, so Malika survives the accident. She was rendered unconscious, but she only got a mild concussion. Pearson, the guy who ran into Kennison, killing him, he actually is going to get charged with a crime. So the, I didn't hear if the person who killed James Dean got charged with any crime whatsoever. I mean, that's murder. You took away a person's life. And, yeah, if it was an accident, you shouldn't have done it. But whatever you think that the value of a human life is worth, whether you accidentally, you know, take a person's life or intentionally do so, at some, you know, at some point you're negligent. So if you accidentally took someone's life, I don't think you should get a full sentence as if you did it intentionally, but I feel like you should get a pretty substantial, you know, 10, 20, maybe 30 years in prison. You took a life. You took somebody's life. And so, you know, there's some, you know, crimes out here where nobody's injured. If you don't wear your seatbelt, nobody's injured. So I would much rather increase the penalties for actual injuries, actual real injuries to people. So they're going to, uh, James Dean, I don't, uh, didn't know if that guy even got charged, but they, they talked to him and then they let him go home. He hitchhiked all the way back to his house. So, James Dean guy, I don't think, the guy that uh, ran into James Dean accidentally killed him, the, I, I don't know if he got in trouble or not. But this guy's going to get in trouble, but listen to his sentence. So, Pearson pleads guilty to one count of vehicular manslaughter with gross negligence. He's sentenced to one year of probation, 300 hours of community service, and his driver's license was suspended for two years. Yeah, I think your driver's license should be taken away from you for way longer than two years. You should get some jail time. He didn't even get any jail time. One year probation, 300 hours of community service. That's ridiculous. He took Sam Kinison, you know, not just a human life, but a legendary life. He took a god out of this planet. And he just gets his license suspended for two years, has to do a little bit of community service, and, you know, be on his best behavior for one year. God, he should have 30 years probation, 10 years jail, something like that, but this isn't even close. Sam Kennison is buried at a family grave plot in Memorial Park Cemetery in Tulsa, Oklahoma. His gravestone is inscribed with the unattributed quote, and in an another time and place he would have been called prophet. Okay, so the lessons of Sam Kennison's death is again, like James Dean, do not assume that a car that is in your lane will turn. I mean, that's supposedly James Dean last his last words. And I kind of, I don't know, I guess I want to believe that he's innocent, so just him driving on the road, and he's like, he'll turn, right? He's going to turn, and he didn't. They run head on, and then he tried to do a maneuver at the very last second. But they assumed that the car was going to turn. They have an oncoming car in their lane. And did they slow down immediately? Did they slow down or did they speed up and try to play chicken? I mean, isn't that James Dean? One of his movies was to play chicken with somebody. So you see an oncoming car. What's, are you a defensive person or are you, you know, an offensive person? Do you say, well, I need to scare this person into, you know, getting back into the other lane? Or do you say, I'm going to slow down, and if he goes right, I go left. If he goes left, I go right. So I'm going to slow down, possibly come to a complete stop, or just drive out into the field and just keep driving as far as I can drive to get the fuck away from this, you know, psychopath who is driving on the wrong side of the fucking road. You're driving, what, a two-ton bullet? A car is a two-ton bullet. You're going 50 miles an hour, you could do major damage, so... You know, wear your seatbelt, that's another thing. Um, James Dean and Sam Kennison, essentially, they, you know, get killed because they ran into a, a head-on collision. You know, having a fender bender here and there is something else, but a head-on collision is probably the worst, you know, because even if they stop, they're still going, what, 40, 30 miles an hour? That's enough, you know, to do some real damage. So, now when it comes to him talking to God, there is no God, so something else is going on. I think when people pray to God, they're doing a kind of meditation, and they're organizing their thoughts. They're scared, they're putting all their fears on this uh, imaginary person that they've concocted in their own brains, and so they're having this dynamic conversation with, you know, essentially imaginary character in their own minds. Well, when they're talking to God, what's God saying back to them? Well, God's saying what they think. So they're just having this, you know, essentially a conversation with themselves. And if that makes it easier for people to, you know, visualize an actual sort of person, hey, 
What's up, God? Oh, okay. Yeah, you doing good? Look at me. I'm doing good, too. Thank you, God, for asking. And so, you know, when they say he's talking to God, I don't exactly, this, his death sticks with me. His, the, Sam Kinison's death sticks with me because it's like the black character Dyson in Terminator 2, when he was breathing his last breath, he was just, <gasps> and then slowly expired, right? Slowly but surely, death is closing in. And so I think what Sam Kinison was doing was either talking to the people around him or talking to himself. So the words that he was using, he could feel death closing in on him. And so at first he says, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. Nobody really does. Nobody, no matter how stupid religious people, you know, how they say they just want to go to heaven and they're not living for this world, they're living for another world. Okay, you're fucking insane. They don't really want to die. They don't put themselves in crazy situations. So, you know, I, I don't understand that. That's, you know, insanity. Sam says, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, because he didn't want to die. So he's essentially talking to himself or the other people, and he's like, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. But he could feel it coming. He could feel death enclosed, enveloping around him. And then he said, but why? And this was supposed to be to God, right? I don't want to die, I don't want to die. Well, you have to. But why, God? And then he says, okay, okay, okay. So those are his last words. I don't want to die, I don't want to die, but why? Okay, okay, okay. So when he says, but why, to God, to himself, to the others around him, he's on the top of his game. And so I feel like he does, I, I don't want to die. I'm dying. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. But why? I'm on top of my game right now. You know, I just got married six days ago. I'm doing these gigs. I'm making some money. I'm doing good in this world. I just bought me a brand new Trans Am. <laughs> um, he's, you know, so, but, but why? I don't want to die. I don't want to die. But Why? You know, maybe he's talking to his own manifestation of God, but he's still talking to himself. And then, well, eventually, he, you know, uh, accepts death at the very last second. Okay. 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 And so, it's, you know, it's sad. It's almost, you know, how 9,000 days... <laughs> It's sad. I mean, it's his last words, and he slowly goes out, and he acknowledges it, and he accepts it. So that's terrifying. That means death, you can feel it coming, and you can feel it up to the very last moment until you lose consciousness forever. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Why? Okay. 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 Another time and place he would have been called a prophet. He was this evangelical preacher for the longest time, so I could see his style. He's a little bit white trash, but he was actually progressive when it comes to a lot of the things that he was saying. So he was, you know, just out there to make people laugh, but he was the bad boy of comedy. He was yelling loudly. He was dirty, and he was yelling at the top of his lungs. He would, you know, delve into politics. He was in your face, and he was loud. There is this one joke, he said, if you're thinking about getting married, just remember this face. No! Or, ah! 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 <laughs> you're going to get married? Ah! So, you know, he just was in your face and was funny as hell, that desert joke. You know, you live in a fucking desert. <laughs> it's like, you know, not everybody in Africa, you know, is living in a desert. But that's, you know, part of the problem, right? So it's not just, hey, I'm starving out here. How come no one's sending me food? Well, you're starving out in the middle of the desert. There's, you know, lots of desert areas in the United States of America. He's going to die in a desert. And so, you know, like Las Vegas, we, you know, we're Americans, so we could turn deserts into um, a, an oasis, a metropolis oasis. You know, we can turn desert, patches of the desert at least, into civilization. So you could turn, you know, those areas if people don't want to move or can't move, right? You can't, I mean, get them a U-Haul truck. That might actually be what's necessary. So you're going to pay the $500 that it takes for the U-Haul truck to go there and, you know, deliver their stuff to another place. So that's more expensive than uh, sending food. I mean, if that's, you know, the, the solution. So Sam Kinison is, I, I don't know if I want to say a prophet, but in a way, it makes me think of Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey says, ultimately, when you look at a person's life, there's an essence there. There's a spirit there. 
So it's, you know, Sam Kinison, the man, but then Sam Kinison, the man, puts something out here for the rest of us. And, you know, if you like his work, great. If you don't, fast forward. But I think putting yourself out there is something, you know, in a way, he reminds me of, like, Ralphie May. He never was, like, the top of his game. He's kind of a comedian's comedian. People saw him. People went out to see him. He was, you know, raunchy and dirty, and uh, so it was probably, like, you know, taboo to, you know, go see a Sam Kinison show. Um, Ralphie May, the same way. Ralphie May pushes up <laughs> against many standards of our society. And they weren't, like, gigantic, but they were big enough to where they had careers. And so they're on their way doing their thing. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's essentially my take on the death of Sam Kinison. Was he talking to God? Maybe. It was a, manifest a manifestation of a God he had created and had kept, you know, close to him, if he was talking to him. But ultimately, he didn't want to die. He was fighting to live, and then he could feel it coming in, and he was like, why? And then he just accepted it. Okay. Okay. Okay.